The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate the growling and problem with us. We have the Dow Industrials up 37. NASDAQ is flat. S&P is up 4. Gold contract also flat, 14.12 an ounce. We have silver at $15.20. Light sweet crew down 28 cents, $59.15 a barrel. Notes and bonds. You got the 10 year down now, four ticks, 127.26. 30 year down 12 at 155.11. Now, both of those rejected lower price yesterday, had lighter volume. You're pulling back with light volume. King dollar. King dollar down 92 ticks, trading 95.650. The euro is at 113. The yen is trading at 107.75, and the pound is at 127 to 1 U.S. dollar. And uh, no doubt, I heard the update when you did the uh, uh, update, Tom, and uh, Bitcoin. We got, we got to go to Bitcoin first, folks, because... why? It, my, I already got the chart right oh, here. Cool. I saved it. There you go. So this is the monthly, man. We'll go down into the short frame. Yep. Look at that. Up 1000 bucks. So I just won. That's just the retracement all the way from 20000 we got that spike right over the 61.8, man. That's a monthly, but man, what a monthly bar. 7,800 to 13.8 on a monthly. Um, that is amazing. And it is amazing. And then overnight, folks, you're talking about some volatility. Yeah, so here's the, what are we looking at, 10-minute bar, yeah. Yeah. So you made it down to 10,300 from 13.8 only two nights ago, and then we make it back above 12000 So you trade from $3,500 from high to low here, and then back up $2,000. Right. Uh, and we're coming into the weekend. Yeah. So when we come back on Monday, folks, you can expect this volatility uh, to continue because they love basically uh, – the weekends. Yeah. You know, when I, I say mean, that, it's just... The, the, the market. I mean, yeah. so this, this uh, the point right here, that's the point last week. And you go from the 21st to the 24th, you can see that, I mean, that's where, you know, it really jumped from a price point of like 80, 80 9,800, yeah, 9,800 to open in at like 11,000, 10% over the weekend. Um, and it took four more days to go exponential. Oh, man. Pretty wild, man. Pretty wild. No doubt. Gold. Let's go take a look at the gold contract out here. So we have with gold, you know, going into the G20, you can expect Sunday night we're going to get some nice volatility. Well, yeah, you'll get volatility because the markets are going to close, of course, this afternoon, 4 o'clock. Uh, 8 o'clock on Sunday night, that's when Asia opens back up. And uh, bottom line is that you, with the gold contract here, we've done two th uh, 217,000 contracts uh, bottom line is that it doesn't look to me like this thing's going to back off much. I mean, we can get back down to the lows of yesterday, that's for sure, which is 14.01. Okay. Um, you know, but it's not a bad setup here. No. What, what I suspect we're going to have out here today, now, 217,000 for this time of day is pretty good volume. So that's going to get us into probably 400,000, which is not bad. Yeah. Um, It'd be interesting to see if you, you get any headlines today that might affect the dollar, which, yes. which could move. You know, gold with some volume, for, for sure. sure. By the and time, I think futures go um, the pit 130 for gold, I believe. Yes, All right. yes. And and what ends up happening here with the dollar, so the dollar was setting up a nice ABC structure on the way down. The reason I say was is that I don't like, well, yeah, I don't like what's going on with the dollar right now. Because what we have is this. So I, I think the dollar's in an ABC structure down. That being said, though, guess what? Now you're down. And you're going to see this contraction of volume is dramatic. It's it's low. So it's like, okay, man, the dollar isn't done with its bounce yet, you know, because I would rather see this up right now with light volume than down. Because when it's down with light volume, go through this again. There's no sellers, man. And if there's no sellers, guess what? That means that this thing can bounce again, meaning bounce higher before sure. it goes lower on, on, on a basis. Yeah. Um, you know, banks out here today with, uh, you know, the, the banks went through their stress test they all raised the dividends uh you know i know it's, it's pretty amazing <laughs> it's a party baby it's a party break open the I, champagne break now, open the bubbly now one of the biggest deals out here 
was Deutsche Bank, okay? I saw some headlines for them as well. They're yeah. They laying off. They, What's going on? Well, they passed this stress test. This was this was a big deal. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, they said the plan of laying off half its equities jobs. Yeah. Um, That's quite a headline. 20,000 jobs. <laughs> Big numbers, Seriously. man. That's... One in six full-time positions. I'm just reading Oof. left and right, you know, as, I mean, that's... That's, that's a lot of people, man. Yeah. You know. And I think, though, I just saw an upgrade, as in they're in big trouble, right? Many times. Yes. You're in big trouble. Huge changes need to be made for, yep. for this company to survive. And maybe the market's saying, okay, maybe you have a shot if you're really going to lay off 20,000 people. Yes. Get a little bit smaller, maybe, somehow. And then what you do have on top of that's that... A, there was is a stress that... test, one above it. Yeah. Right here. And that's, okay. you know... Deutsche Bank passes stress tests as all 18 banks win approval. And, you know, that's a big deal, man. Yeah. You know, because, uh, you know, the, the CEO, the new CEO that's in here, he's trying to clean it up. The bottom line is that, you know, that's, that's a, they, a shot. Oh, for sure. And that's so, so they're attributing that, they, whoever is, you know, Bloomberg, yeah. but that it popped right on that news, let alone the layoffs. So maybe right. that is what's um, the bigger news in that, yeah. that stock. Yeah. yeah. Big, big numbers, man. Big numbers. There's no doubt about that. Uh, we go. With, let's go take a look at the NDX and see the strength versus the weakness inside that NDX. Uh, you get Western Digital. That's up. Uh, we talk about volatile stock, right? This is always seems to be up here. That's up three percent. Their chip maker. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess, let me just look at this. It's. I think it's storage. Uh, so collection. Yeah. Storage management protection. Use okay. of digital content. That'd be uh, like cloud. Uh, yeah, solid straight drives, hard drives. Okay. Yeah. So versus chips, right? Right. They're actually making drives. Ma imagine, you know, so watch this. This is like, you know, 16 billion. And you can see this is the, the chip business as well as the drive business, the commodity business. Look yes. at the numbers. How they, 14 billion in 2015. 2019, uh, 17, 19 billion. Yeah. 2019, 16 billion. Very volatile. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's huge, man. Yeah. It's huge. And uh, so. You got um, ASML Holding, that's up 1.9. Alexa Pharmaceuticals up 1.6. Alexion, yeah. And JB Hunt is up 1.5. Uh, taken away from it, you got Biogen uh, down 1.6. Uh, Insight is uh, off uh, 1.3. And Align Technology. How about Apple? That's not a small move to be down a full percent. Yeah, um, well, this is this is interesting with Apple too. So let's let's see what they're going to be really prone to any headlines with China and the G20. This well, this is I, I think we're going to hear from Trump real quick cuz look at this look at this number. Apple moves Mac Pro production Oh, I thought it just the opposite. To China okay. from the US. I thought it was saying to from China to the yeah. US. Okay. So, you might get a tweet. So we'll definitely get a tweet yeah, now. Exactly. <laughs> we'll definitely get a tweet now. So, so Apple yeah. has hired a contractor. Uh, Quanta computer. Yeah, to manufacture the Mac Pro computer. Um, Factory near Shanghai, it's saying. Yeah. Uh, Mac Pro is designed and engineered in the U.S. and includes U.S.-made components, adding that the final assembly is the only part of the manufacturing. Um, and that's what China's great at, right? I mean, you know, they don't, they don't need to manufacture the chips and the devices. Right. They have... The people putting it together, literally people, snapping they, the pieces in. Exactly. Um, exactly. And that's what that points exactly. to, yeah. 877-927. Just before we yep. jump away the Apple, did you see the story with Ives, their, their um, designer uh, guys? That's why it's that. Down. Stepping away, yeah. Uh, that's, so this is a this is pretty intense, folks. It is. He's, he's, he's been here two decades. He's, he's their designer. I mean, he, he's exactly. the sleekness, you know, yep. and whether you like right. Apple or not, man, they got some sleek oh, products, right? Beautiful. And um, pretty remarkable. He's just going to start his own firm and then be like, and, and I'll still be your guy, but now you're going to pay me as a business and, and not as an employee. And Samsung can hire him. Right. Right. Anyone right. can hire right. him. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Don't miss the last chance to sign up for the Taz Profile Scanner at just $97 a month. Starting July 1st, we're raising the price to $197 a month. This is your last chance to lock in the $97 rate for as long as you remain a subscriber. And as always, new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk. Don't miss this last chance to sign up at the low rate of just $97 a month. Sign up for the Taz Profile Scanner today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is up 28. You get the NASDAQ uh, up 6. S&P's up 4. And uh, we got uh, baseball coming to London That's this weekend, what I right? That's man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the classic. Yankees, Red Sox, man. No, no greater rivalry in baseball, for sure. So uh, they're coming to London. They're, they're trying to copy the NFL, man. They want some Europe games. Yeah. The NFL managed to pull it off. Now they have a couple games over there a year, and they pack the house. And uh, I bet baseball's trying to get in on that action. Look at that. That's. And I guess it's. How are they going to play? I just. Oh, there you go. Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. London okay. Stadium, the home of the 2012 Olympic Games. That should be a pretty cool. Uh, atmosphere you know i'm sure so let's see tickets have been on sale since late last year but as of thursday there were still plenty oh, available yeah i was just thinking they're gonna they're gonna be standing in front giving these things away you know i mean they, they want to pack house. exactly yeah. so the, it will be filled uh for the people of london pretty cool uh you, you can go buy some cheap tickets i'm sure and see yankees red Sox. i mean gotta love it right probably less expensive than if you went to new york or boston well if they got plenty of tickets left <laughs> yeah. um and it's thursday and the games are saturday and it's sunday yeah because yeah. that's not how things work in boston or in new york no. as we all know not even close yeah wow yeah that's in the, and then you know folks uh where we are in tampa they're floating the idea of the Tampa Bay Rays. Now, the Rays have a real huge problem just getting any people to the stadium, period. Yes. They average about 14,000. Okay. And that's the least amount and has been the least amount in the whole league Yeah. for a long period of time. So what, what's happening is that they're floating the idea of doing half the season in Tampa and then half the season in Montreal. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, if we'll that see happens, that. it's probably the end of... The Rays being in Florida because it's like you don't go to half a team and then go back to a full team. 
Do you, you know what I, I mean? Yeah, listen, uh, I, it, 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 so what, we'll see what happens. It's a tough deal, though. I, you know, it's a tough right, deal. Coming right. from, you with, know, with we're a, Red Sox fans, we're yeah. Rays fans, too. Right. But the experience being down here is not the experience that you want in a major league team. Right. I mean, they just can't get anything going. The games aren't that fun because nobody's there, right? right. I mean, that's, right. that's they have a right. decent team, too. This is a mother team. It's I a know. tough problem because they compete in the same division with the Red Sox and the Yankees, which right. is almost not even fair. Um, and they do yeah. pretty well. Especially for their payroll, that they, but baseball, baseball's uh, baseball's got a little bit of a problem in its own right. Where four they, and a half hours, four, yeah, yeah, and they play 162 games a year. Right, um, right. You know, I, I, if you literally wanted to watch every hour, we we're talking about this friends night of just a regular season, right? Yeah. You're talking about 500 hours, okay? You're talking about 12 and a half weeks of full time work just watching regular season games. That's crazy. I, I, yeah. So the the it's that takes a lot of interest. Yes. Um, you know, so yeah. that's a tough. And we'll so their carrot, folks, is that uh, meaning the Rays carrot to let the mayor of St. Pete even talk to them uh, talk, because of the way the contract is structured, they can't go make a deal uh, for two more years. Uh, is that they would bring spring training back to St. Pete? Okay. You know, so that so what they would do, they'd have spring training here for six weeks, yep. then they'd start the season here. And then end the season here in June, okay. and then go up. You know, so that car is pretty good. You know, yeah. Uh, you know, it's a tough situation oh, it either is. way. It, That's is. What it really is. There's, there's no doubt. You know, it's, we'll see where the whole thing shakes out. But um, you go. Let's go take a look at that silver market. So what I expect we're going to see, you know, is the currencies really moving around quite a bit um, Sunday night. You know, silver right now, you know, sideways move. We we need another couple good signs of strength in silver. You know, it has broken its downtrend. I mean, it, you, know, you can see it, you know, it broke it with conviction, too. That that move, uh, was that last, last Friday, right? No, 3-6. Uh, Thursday, I yeah. think. Thursday, yeah. So that move was good. You know, the move yes. we're talking about, we went from 15-20 uh, up to 15-52, uh, had the volume behind, and that's saying, okay, silver can get up into this 16-38 uh, number. So it's going to be uh, about the dollar. There's no doubt about that. Uh, and we'll see where... That is going to take us. If we go take a look at the uh, inside the Dow Industrials, let's just, you know, I heard. Is let's Bowen get, doing anything I want to look at Boeing. That's what I want to look at. You know why? Because oh, we get some movers. Like you said, yeah. the bank's up more than 2%. You got yep. Apple down 1%. I'm sure they're going to be hitting that uh, United Health. That's a big one, too. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, so you get Goldman up 30, uh, putting 31 positive points. Uh, JP uh, put in 16. And what happened, folks, is that they all upped their dividends last night. That's okay. that's what happened. As soon as the, 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 yeah. the Fed came out, they allowed them to up their dividends. That's because the stretch tells them how much capital they have. Yes. So that's where they get to basically judge. Oh, well, we have all this extra capital. We'd still pass it. Well, we'll just give it back. Yeah. 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 It's a number. It is. You got... Uh, United Health is negative 39. You got Apple uh, negative 14. Uh, Johnson Johnson negative 8. Boeing's off 15 cents for $363 stocks. So and yeah. so Boeing, this is they're, they're, this is going to be so intriguing watching this shake out because what you had yesterday is that the FAA said, hey, listen, man, you got to fix this. They found another flaw in the software. Yes. The CEO comes out in the afternoon, right? This is Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. And the CEO said, yeah, well, it's going to be fixed, and we expect the, the max to go back in service in October. Okay. October. Okay. okay. This is July. Well, you know, so it's going to get really intriguing because the when they grounded this, right, about a month after they grounded it, I remember them saying that, okay, by the end of the year, they're going to be up. Yes. Okay. And now they're just, he's going to stop pushing it, man. I mean, because when I heard that, I says, whoa, that's, that's a pushback. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, really? You're going to be up in October? I mean, July, August, September. It's 120 days. Oh, yeah. It's, I know? agree. No. So um, He's the CEO of the company, right? That's, yeah. that's the job he's tasked with. Oh, yeah. With. No, this, Get, this getting the, the planes they produce right. sold and in the air. Yeah. I mean, um, it's, you know, because they, when they first got grounded, they had 4,000 planes okay. on order. And I saw something in here about Southwest saying that, too, that Southwest expends Boeing Max fleet cancellations until October 1st. Um, so no matter what Boeing is doing, Southwest automatically has canceled all the flights that had that max planned into things. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting, folks. It is, what's happening now, it is affecting flights across the country. Uh, here in Tampa, what ended up happening, 
um, is that you had um, a couple of the international flights. Now, every, every airport wants international flights because what ends up happening is that it's better for everyone that's living here. And what, what we had here is that uh, Icelandic, they used to have, uh, they'd only started a couple of years ago. But what happened is that they decided that they stopped just like that. Okay. Because they need that plane. Sure. They, you know, they wanted to build up a, a you know, a, a customer base here. Yeah. But bottom line is that, you know what, not enough planes. Okay. Sure. Tampa market's just starting. Okay, we're going to pull back. We'll, we'll look at it. No, I'm sure. they, they didn't even say they're going to look at it again. Okay. But the yeah. bottom line is that they pull back, you know. Yeah. And, um, I mean, you see that. So, Southwest, they're the biggest operator of that 737 really? MAX. And so, they eliminated the plane from its flight schedules until at least October 1st, a month longer than they had previously planned. So, these airlines, they've been kind of updating their schedule, right? right? Because, I mean, the flight plans of how many planes you need to run these amount of routes. Totally. It's a highly sophisticated mathematical model of you only want as few planes as possible, right? right. So, you want them going all the time. Right. So, this is all factored in already to their schedules, yep. their plans, they're built in. So they're trying to keep those intact, but they just keep pushing it back. And again, 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 right? Pretty wild. That's a tough one to be in that room, too. Oh, baby. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Dow's up 25, Nasdaq's up 8, S&P's up 3.5. Come right back. Folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow Industrial's up 20. You get the Nasdaq up six. S and P's are up two and a half. And uh, so, as we're coming into this uh, G20, it's going to get really interesting. Uh, the war of words here, right? It's not going to stop for a couple of days. It's right? not. It isn't. Yeah. So you, you got this story here, and what the headline is? The headline here says. Um, uh, no, G? Yeah, G fires shots at U.S. before Trump meeting without mentioning him. So in remarks to African leaders uh, this morning, G took a not-so-subtle swipe at Trump's policy slogan, America First, warning against bullying practices. Z said that any attempt to put one's own interests first and undermine others will not win any popularity. Well, this is not... We, we know that popularity is, is off the table, so it, it depends on... on where it's coming from. Uh, uh, Z then just uh, used the remarks on the digital economy to call a fair and equitable market environment and completeness in the vitality of global supply chains. Yeah. So it's, we, we're going to. talking to the South Korean president, Moon Jae in, that he opposed protectionism as well as external influence on the two countries' relationship. What's he mean external on the South Korea? Is anything, is anything, uh, <laughs> yeah, know, right. our, our influence, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> G's verbal shadow boxing with Trump underscores the delicate balance he needs to strike. Um, and it is just interesting. There were already pictures out there this morning of Trump and President Macron of France, yeah. you know, interacting and just the body language. And Trump has his hands on his shoulder, yeah. you know, and there's also that, that stuff's going to be coming in all weekend, I imagine. They got to figure out what Monday morning we come back, folks, what they have to figure out is how both of them can come out winning that we think. Trump won. Sure. The Chinese think that she won. Yeah. And that, that's, that's... If they can you know, figure that out, they're going to go for it. Right, that's, that's exactly. Whether they exactly. can. Right. 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 Yeah, so... Because if each person can spin it as a win... Right. And then, then that's... that's Because, yeah. It's, right. It is what it is. And, we'll see what happens. And uh, we'll see uh, how that shakes out. If we go overseas, let's go take a look at Shanghai. So, because the way the Shanghai market has been trading, it really looks to me like Shanghai wants to go higher. Um, three, let's see. If that's the case, I would say to me that the next three billion, three hundred billion, rather, is not going to get done, meaning in tariffs, because, you know, that is some monster numbers. Yeah, if that comes out, um, the Shanghai is not going to pop no. upwards, that's for sure. Not, <laughs> not on not. the initial exactly. news, I laugh, because so, that would be... you know, you can see you've been going sideways for a yeah. long time, you know. And, you know, you get a gap above it, but it just looks to me like, you know what, like today, you reject, last night, you rejected the lower price out here. It, you know, it's not going to the moon, but I, to the way this is set up, it looks to me that you are going to go back to those highs, which is at 32.28. We put this on a longer basis. You know, you're going to see that, you know, we had already come down into the lows of uh, January 2016. You did it with tremendously light of volume. Uh, you know, they, they're in the billions over there. So it's yeah. 333 against 400. Okay. You came off the low at volume. So it's just like, okay, the top of this consolidation is at uh, 35. You know? So we'll see where this baby's going to shake out, man. I mean, you know, platinum. Let's, let's go take a look at uh, platinum out here. So platinum is still the laggard. Uh, Needs a couple more signs of strength. You know, you're up $14 right now. Oh, it's a good move. Okay, yeah. this is what it needs. Let's take a look. That's a good, that's, now, this is what's pretty cool, folks. You know, we got the sign of strength coming off the low June 1st. You go sideways. You can see on the 28th, you start pushing higher again. The 20th, I think. 20th, yeah. you start pushing higher with volume. Today, uh, bottom line is that, you know, oh, that's going to be the wrong contract, too. Let me get this. That's PLQ, not, maybe? Yeah, PL... Q? Q? Ah, there we go. Let's see. Yeah. There it is. V. V. Look at that. Okay, so... October already. Uh, isn't that What's going on, man? Yeah, see, is it gonna be, when's 2020 futures contracts coming at us, man? Uh, oh, uh, that's going to be crazy. It, I, yeah, I, we're I in October 19. Right. So we're... <laughs> yeah, you get, you get action here. This, yeah. is, this is good. This is saying that... Um, let's see. So if I do this... Yeah, you, this is saying platinum can now get up to 923, you know? Okay, almost 100 bucks. Now, now, what's interesting here, let's just look at this. There doesn't seem to be anything fundamentally that's moving it. Sure. Um, you know, it's, it's a good move. Yeah. That, that's the real bottom All line. All those metals are getting some volatility, man. Yeah. You know, for no sure. No doubt. Yeah. Let's go to our man Charlie in Framingham. Charlie, what's going on, brother? 
Hey there. Charlie, good morning. How, How you doing, you man? Hello? Yes, we got ya. Okay, cool. Um, Tom, uh, you, you didn't respond to my email. <laughs> Maybe you didn't get it. You know, I, I didn't, Charlie. I would have responded. Oh, well, okay. I didn't see it. I probably I'll, I'll got re, it. I'll resend it. Okay, cool. Uh, it was just in response to uh, a conversation that you had the other day cool. with somebody. Okay. Anyway, I'll move forward. Um, okay, you guys. I'm in it. I've got a like a some a seven percent profit, and you know. Yeah, just looking for some help. Let's take a look. So you guess is the Velocity Shares three times long position inside the natural gas market. Oh, natural gas. Your long natural gas, man. Triple long. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah, take a look well, at this that's video. that's why I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because natural gas just ain't volatile enough, man. I'm oh going for the trifecta. God. Seriously. <laughs> so let's take a look at the contract first. Yeah, Charlie, I just take your money, man. I, just looking at this okay. contract. You know, to me, natural gas will go right back down to 213. You're at 233. You're coming right up to ice. So, you know. Okay. That's yeah, I know. Call, and that was quick. But I, <laughs> I you, know, you know what happened? That's sticking out like a sore thumb, Charlie. Um, you know, just as the it, it, bottom line, it came up to ice. And, yeah, even with the U gas, you can see it's laying out here, man. That thing hasn't got tested yet. That low and that low is twelve ninety seven. And that is June twentieth. We were just looking at that on what were you looking at? Silver or platinum yes. or one one of them. And either right. way, June twentieth. Right. Yeah. And I, I I can see where you're coming from. It's like, okay, how low can it go? But you know, when you do bring natural gas up on a continuous co contract, you can go a lot lower. That's you know that's 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 how it's set up, man. So yeah, we made it to 150, 160, 140. Oh, yeah, wow. I mean we were looking at yeah. it yesterday. Yeah, yeah. We get lots okay. of natural well, gas out I'll there. Jump out with the profit. Yeah, yeah. Take the money. Then you can you prove it. it over the weekend too. You know. You guys have a great fourth. Okay, you too, you man. Too, Charlie. Have Thanks, a great man. one, Charlie. Be have safe. a safe one. I'll yep. look for that email, okay. man. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs> that's a good move on platinum, man. Yeah, I like that. See what what's. Oh, and gold's moving. Oh, listen, all the metal. Oh, I see what's going on. The dollar just just uh, went down a few ticks here, like another 70 ticks. Let's see what's going on here. See, this is going to be so cool uh, because as these meetings are taking place. Now, this the Trump tweet? What yeah, happened? I don't know, no, but no, I can tell you. There'd be a bigger reaction if we had know, a tweet. <laughs> yeah, we just went from the 95, 730. It's not that big. It's a 95, no, yeah. 610. Yeah, you know, but, but it was a little bit of a pullback as you get yes. a little bit of a pop. You know, that's, two that's to three dollars right. in gold to the upside, 100 oh. ticks down in the dollar. And we take a look at that. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Not, no strength, but not bad. Yeah. I like that platinum move, though. Saying quite a bit. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Dow. Dow's up 41. Nasdaq's up 8. SP's up 4. Come right back. If you are in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 43. Nasdaq's up 11. S&Ps are up by 4. And, folks, as you come over to our website at TFNN, you are going to see right under featured content, Taz Profile Scanner. Now, this is going to be the last weekend that you can take advantage of this piece of software at $97. You uh, got it, man. So, price is going up July 1st, Monday, $197. Uh, it's a great piece of software, man. Steve Dahl. Team at Taz put yes. together an outstanding program, and um, it's worth 197. So they're going up oh, on the price. Yeah, and, and this, this is the last weekend to get in there at 97 bucks. You'll keep that rate for as long as you subscribe. So this is the time to lock it in. You still get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Um, and Steve just did a great webinar with you uh, earlier this month. Yes, 60-minute webinar really walks everybody through subscribers in terms of how you can use that scanner to break down this market and do your work for more profitable trades. And uh, when you subscribe, I mean, there's the archive right there. 57 minutes, the best way to use the TAS profile scanner. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien, June 19th, that is when it was. So less than 10 days ago, you sign up, you gain instant access to that, you gain instant access to the scanner, and um, you can play with it over the weekend, man. Right. Get going, you know? And you gotta remember, folks, so it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you wanna lock in the 97, test it out, we're quite confident that once you test it out, you'll see how powerful it is. And um, it's, it's a great piece of software. It is. They've done a great job. I pull it up all the time. I know you use it almost yeah. daily. So I encourage people to check it out. Last weekend, get it done. Imagine July 1st. It's coming, man. July 4th. I got my fireworks ready. Everybody be careful with your fireworks. I got to go get but some. But I got my fireworks I'll get ready. This I said weekend. I actually have them uh, from. I had some from New Year's, and I was at a house party, and they weren't too comfortable with lighting off big fireworks on uh, New Year's. Okay, and, uh, right. So July 4th, we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. No, totally. you got to love it. Yeah. Let's go take a look at uh, Canopy. Let's see. So Canopy growth, I think it's constant. Yeah, so let's take a look at this. So Canopy is down 29 cents. That being said, I believe it's, is it, yeah, so it's, Yep. This is interesting. Yep. So look at this. Okay, so Alcohol Giant Constellation Brands' latest quarterly revenue beat market expectations as in its earnings as its earnings were way down by the $106 million loss in connection with the stake and canopy growth. That's interesting, right? The U.S. bear maker, Corona, uh, maker yep. of Corona Beer and Kim Crawford Wines posted net sales of $2.1 billion. Let's see, uh, in the quarter, up from a 2.05 yep. billion. Market only expecting 2.07, so sales up uh, not a small amount, too. You're talking about, uh, you know, 
in the billion when you're when you're marking decimals in the billions. Yeah. Um, but yeah, reported a, a loss attributable to shareholders for the three month period of two hundred fifty four million or a buck thirty down from a quarterly profit of seven hundred forty three million. Quite a reversal. Um, yeah. So what happens accounting wise, evidently, right? They they, they probably have to mark to market their equity. That's what I think that is, it could is right? Be, it could, yeah. You know, excluding canopy growth equity losses, the New York-based company okay. says it earned 240 per share right. during the quarter. Constellation said its equity losses in connection with its significant stake in the Canadian cannabis company totaled 106 million um, on a reported basis. Yeah, so it, what happens there, folks, is that that's just a mark to market, and I bet Constellation... They have a um, X percentage investment in that company right exactly and the good thing about publicly traded companies is that you can mark to market every minute of every active day that's and it's right. a fair representation of the equity that you hold and there, um there yeah, it is 18.8 Eight, million shares they have yeah um and that's as of December, which is interesting. I'm sure that's when they made their stake. That's probably what they have. You know, exactly. it hasn't changed. Yeah. Exactly. So 18 million. So let's call it 20 million, just to make it easy for math. Yeah. 20 million times 40 bucks for every 10 bucks, you're 200 million, 800 million. Yeah. Um, but what has this done in the last three months? Right. Um, you just went from. I mean, that's almost 52. The, yeah. 52. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just looking for the exact point. I wonder when that goes quarter. Is it is it April first? Because it hasn't. To Let's see. So I guess oh we got to get constellation brands up then, right? That's what we have to do. Uh, uh well no because it would be canopies. Oh no, you're right. You're right. Yes, constellation. Yeah. Right. So let No, just... but it was all based off canopy. That's it was the 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 loss the equity loss was going to be based off canopies movement of shares in that three month period. Which would be the quarter, which would be April 1st, April, May, June. No matter when you report, right, the quarter goes on a three-month basis. Okay, so, yeah. STZ. So let's, let's look, at, look, at the, look at it. It's up 10%. Yeah. See, so what you have here, which is important to understand, is that I suspect the market, is, that's just like you have a portfolio and it's going to go up and down because yeah. what happens... And you beat on revenue, too. Revenue yes. always matters. You know right. I mean? They're beating right. on revenue. They're right. heavily invested in the cannabis sector, right. which is going to be a good long-term play. Yeah. If you had some losses because Canopy's stock price yeah. had a, a tough three months, not really the biggest deal. Now, yeah, that's going to affect your balance sheet. You know, that's where if, if you want to go out and make acquisitions, it really helps to have more equity in your balance sheet, which yes. got taken away. But they now, are, now yeah. watch this, folks, okay? This is where... Uh, John Boehner is going to make millions if he can get pot legal across the country. Because what happened is that, let's get, I gotta find this story, because this is quite a story. Because what happened yesterday is that uh, Canopy, I still have Canopy up there, right? Okay. So Canopy ended up closing, um, there it is. They, they, Closing their position with acreage. So acreage, if you've heard these ads, um, they haven't been running lately, but three months ago, that's all you heard in the radio um, about marijuana stocks. Uh, this is a great opportunity. You'd hear John Boehner, you know, on and on uh, going that what that's all about. Let me see if I can find this because when you see the story, it, uh, is that it right Number there? Three. Okay, sure. That, yeah, let's no. hit that one. Yeah, no, no. Okay, so yeah, here it is. Uh, Acreage Holding had some head turner uh, has some head turner acquisitions in the works now that its planned sale to pot giant Canopy Growth has been sealed, according to the New York-based company's chief executive officer. There are going to be some really exciting ones. I think some head turners. Some people are going to like. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Kevin Murphy said in an interview in San Francisco ahead of the panel's discussion at the Players Technology Summit presented by Bloomberg. Now, the way this deal goes, folks, is that the acreage holders, okay, so the unusual plan of arrangement between Canopy and Acreage, which closed Thursday, is contingent on cannabis becoming federally permissible in the United States. For now, Acreage's shareholders will receive 
$2.63 of cash, and the company will have access to Canopy's intellectual property and brands. If the deal closes, investors will receive 0.5818 of share of Canopy for each acreage they own. Yeah. The deal is currently worth $26.32 per acre to share, or about $3.1 billion. That's about $10 yeah, premium above. above what it's trading. Yeah. yeah. So what? It's going to get intriguing here. To, you know, that's, we'll break down more because yeah. they can issue 63 million shares to do acquisitions, and I think that's what they're talking about. Part of this plan exactly. now they can issue shares. They get right. the backing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up uh, 33. Nasdaq's up 12. S&P's up 4.5. Uh, Bitcoin, a uh, thousand bucks. Holding it steady, man. 11,685. And, uh, you know, you got a, an analyst out there in the banking business, uh, Mike Mayo. And Mike Mayo is really, very well known, folks, because he came out before the implosion uh, with, he was always a bank analyst, but he, the banks hated him. 
uh, in 2005 and six, because he okay. was saying these, these banks are going to blow up in a huge way. At the beginning, no one paid attention to him, and then all of a sudden, once it started, of course, everyone went to him like, okay. You and know. so I guess he's a Wells Fargo bank analyst uh, now. Yes. Maybe he hasn't been there forever, yeah. but maybe he was. But right. yeah. Now, yeah. he was with something else at that That's point. That's right, but, right. But uh, bottom line, what he's saying now, which I, I totally agree with, and in fact, I was on the TD Ameritrade network before this came out, and I was saying the same thing this morning, that what has happened is that you wouldn't I wouldn't be buying a bank for growth okay but as to a utility just stability you know if you're looking for a couple percent sure um, dividend they're there and he, yeah. what he's saying is move over utilities that's a, yeah banks are directionally moving towards utilities especially with the pro forma dividend yield three percent close yep. to a yield of S&P utility ETF 3.1 while yep. having similar similar return on equities um, the banks traded only about half the PE um, First, those utilities yeah. I think he's talking so, about. Yeah. You can see it. I mean, they just make money hand over fist. I mean, now, uh, there's there's no doubt going forward, the fintech companies, yeah, they, they present a problem for banks. We're oh, talking I about the, yeah. the fees, sure. you know, yeah. going forward. He says the key takeaway from the results of this year's capital analysis interview, known as CCAR, was that capital return should increase by one fourth compared to last year, well above expectations mm -hmm. in aggregate and for almost every bank. Pretty wild. Seems good time to be a bank right now, even with rates where they are. Seriously. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. we get got uh, uh, Think or Swim coming up next. Uh, Kevin Hinks and his team, Basil Schaap and Dave White. I'll be back. Steve Rhodes. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, man. Go get them, folks.